Hi, I'm Gary White for Channel 6 Central Kentucky Television, and I'm here with Juanita Herring at the Marion County Extension Office. And today, it's fall, and right. we're getting ready for Thanksgiving soon. That's right? exactly. We're going to talk a little bit about some Thanksgiving safety tips, but before we do that, we're going to cook something that's also fall like, yes, right? Yes, exactly, Gary. We are going to do, I know you. when you came in, you asked, what are we making today? We are going to use a winter squash. Uh -huh. um, you know, we all know what squash is, but this is a winter squash, and we are going to make a kushaw pie. Kushaw. Kushaw. And that's and the name of the squash. Yes, that's okay. the name of the squash. The squash. And I know for people out there, maybe they're not familiar with one. Uh, I wished I had one, but the grocery store did not have one this morning. But they're very large. They're just like the little yellow crooked neck squash. You uh -huh. know, they put you in the mind of that but about seven or eight times larger than that, if you could kind of picture it. And it's like green and, and uh, a lighter, not really white, but a green, a real light green, a little stripe on it. And you can cut, you can cut those up and you can cook that kushal. And this is the finished product after you... That's the innards. That, that's the innards. There you go, Gary. This is the innards and we have already uh, have got our kushal. Uh, thanks to Melody Mays, one of the secretaries, she cooked a kushal here for us last year, and we froze the innards, okay. as you want to call them, and you, they freeze very well, mm -hmm. and uh, then you bring it out and you make a pie. Okay, and I assume since it's a winter squash that it harvested or grows yes in the it's winter. one of the fall squash fall, it's one yeah. of the a lot of times people use these for decorations mm -hmm. more though than you see a lot of people eating them but they're uh, in the fall they're usually paired up with the pumpkins and other kinds of fall yeah. squash together and they're very pretty they're very colorful when you're doing that right. but a lot of times things that we see that are very pretty as a display they're also good to eat. They're edible. Our, yeah, our forefathers probably ate lots of those. And it looks like pumpkin. It does look there, like pumpkin. Right. And you're, uh, when you taste of it a little bit, it's going to taste like a pumpkin, you okay. know? So Promises? there you go. Promise. Okay. I promise. I promise. <laughs> oh, it does to me. It does to me. Um, and you know, I was like you, Gary. Uh, I was probably maybe a teenager before I have ever eaten any kushal before. I can remember my mother cooking them and my grandmother, you know, and we had them. And uh, they actually made a cake out of them too. You know, okay. there's a lot of people that have pumpkin bread or pumpkin right. cake. I can remember them making, using the kushal instead of the pumpkin. Kushal cake. Kushal cake, you know. <laughs> because like you said, it looks like it. And you can tell the texture uh -huh. is a lot like your pumpkin after uh, it's been cooked. It looks like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there you go. So a lot of things. Gary, we learn something That's new right. all the time. Right. So it's going to be a kushal pie. Yes. And you much. know, like you said, it's fall. We just got a few weeks before Thanksgiving. This is a little alternative. You know, we always have pumpkin pie Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to have pumpkin pie. Whether they like it or not, we've got to have pumpkin pie, right? <laughs> Pumpkin pie is one of my very favorite things to eat. You have to be something with the guts you took out of the jack o' lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you're on it today, I'm telling you. But with this, um, you can. This is an alternative if you uh, have one. Maybe you still have one in your fall decorations. Mm -hmm. And you know, and don't throw them away. Take them out and wash them really thoroughly good on the outside. Start cutting them. And uh, the thing about it, the peeling is very, very tough on it. Okay, so the best way to do is to, like I said, wash it thoroughly, uh, kind of block it up a little bit, and you turn it over in the bottom of a shallow pan, put you just a little tab of water in it, and then cover it with some foil, and put it in the oven uh, on about 350, 300 to 350, and it takes a while for that to bake. But that way, you, whenever it is done, then it will look like this, Gary, when you uh -huh. clean it, scrape it up. Good. But you're going to take the seeds out of it before we, before right. we do all of this, okay? okay. Yes. So, you know, we can do that with our pumpkin and with our kushal, too. Right. Can you bake the kushal seeds like you can with pumpkin seeds and eat them? I've never tried that. I've never had that question, but I don't see why you couldn't because they're a lot they're similar. very similar mm -hmm. to it. I think that you can. You know, a lot of times, uh, Gary, People don't realize how much things that we can 
that, as like you said, they're edible to mm -hmm. eat, and we just don't, we just don't do it. Yeah. You know. Okay. Maybe our forefathers did, and we're just kind of dragging around. Right. But this is a kush, y'all. This is uh, something that you can, an alternative doing your Thanksgiving meal. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's in it, and it's a little different than our pumpkin pie, too, uh, uh, the ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, it calls for two cups of our kush, uh, uh, sorry, our cooked kush all, and um, tongue twister. It is a tongue twister. You're going to use a fourth of a cup of butter, in which you see we've already melted our butter. You're going to use a fourth of a cup of white sugar. You're going to use a half a cup of brown sugar. We're going to use two eggs. We use large. We're going to use lemon extract today. It calls for a teaspoon of lemon extract, a mm. teaspoon of our vanilla, and then we're going to use a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and we're going to use a fourth of a teaspoon of grand, ground cinnamon. Now, this recipe calls for a graham cracker crust. This is one of our plated up recipes from our Kentucky Proud uh, that we have. Uh, we did this recipe several times in here over the last couple of years. Uh, like I said, it calls for a 9-inch graham cracker crust. Well, most of us up here did not like it with a graham cracker crust, so we played with it a little bit. So we used just a regular pie shell, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And you can, either or, you can work with it, but we like it better with this. And when you sample it today, I think that you're going to like that also with the regular pie shell. Okay. So that's something that is optional. You can either do the graham cracker crust or you can use your regular pie shell. Okay. And if you notice, Gary, I was not energetic or not one of those Miss Betty Crocker cookers. I just bought my pie shell this right. morning, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can do either or. Is there a nutritional difference between doing graham cracker and... I'm not really That's sure, Gary. I don't know. But a lot of times, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of times we already have our pie shells mm -hmm. or we could even make them. Right. You know, they're very simple to make. Uh, but that's something that we can use. Okay? okay. All good. right. Now, we've told all the ingredients that we're going to do. This is very, very easy. Okay. I like easy. Oh, it's easy. We just kind of have to throw it, throw it together almost, you know? Okay. So, we're going to get started here. Uh, the direction said to prepare the squash, wash it, cook it, and we've already done so. So, <clears throat> it calls for uh, two cups, two cups of our kushal, and uh, we've already got that measured out. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, actually when they were uh, doing the kushal after they cooked them, they measured it out and we put them in the bags and already had our two cups measurement okay. out. Okay, good. Well planned. Yeah. Okay, so that's the main base for our pie. Now then, it says uh, that we're going to add our sugar and our butter in here. So, I said we use a fourth of a cup of butter. Melted. Melted, and I did go ahead and melt it. I, some people just take it and just uh, cut it in small little pats, but I like to mix it better with mm -hmm. it already melted. And then we're going to add our sugar. All right, it calls for one half cup of brown sugar. Okay? okay. So for you folks out there, I've already measured this. I thought it'd be a little easier. Uh -huh. I'm going to do my brown sugar. I always kind of like to mix that all up a little bit. Okay. Looks good. Hey, you know, that's Maybe. fall. Brown yeah. sugar, cinnamon. I mean, do you think of Thanksgiving or fall things mm -hmm. then? Sounds good. Okay, and then it calls for a one-fourth cup of white sugar. I mean, it's going to be a little sweet treat there, isn't it? That's good, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But now we have to remember, this is one of Kentucky Proud's plated up recipes also. So this is what the university has sent us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see my butter is colors there. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't get my butter completely melted, but it's just that. But it's going to cook right on in to our pie today, Gary. Uh huh. Okay. Right. So we have mixed our kushal, our butter, and our sugar. 
So now it says to add our eggs, okay? There we go. And Good job, not getting any shell in there, right? Oh, we don't want shell. I don't think that would be, we don't want that crunch in there, do we? Well, don't want the that'd crunch. Be a little different. Yes, it would. I, I don't know. I don't think eggshells is going to be good for us. <laughs> okay, we're just going to mix our eggs up a little bit. Okay. This is kind of just like a mix it all up. It you is. Know. You know, like I said, it's kind of like one of those just very simple. Now then, I'm going to get that edge. You can still see some of my eggs uh -huh. whites there. But we want to make sure that we mix all of that up thoroughly. Now that little brown you see right there, Gary, that is part of our brown sugar. Uh-huh. Looking good. Looking good. I like it. You just kind of put it all in one bowl and not a whole lot of measuring to it, you know? Yeah. Now then, we've got that thoroughly mixed. So now it says that we need to use our lemon extract. You notice, Gary, I was pulling my bowl over here because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when, when we're pouring, what kind of happens sometimes? More than you need. More than we need. That's exactly right. right. So it called for a teaspoon of vanilla. I love to smell the vanilla. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, and actually, you're going to taste just that little bit of tart in the pie. Just a mm. little bit, just a little hint of it. And then we're going to use a teaspoon of our pure vanilla. Again, I'm going to pour it. And it's okay. I have used my vanilla in this spoon. It's okay. I made my lemon. lemon. So I'm going to pour my vanilla in here because it's okay. We're You're not, mixing it up anyway. Yes, it's going to be the same. We're not doing any kind of cross-contamination there. Okay. So we have got our lemon and our vanilla. And I think that just smells so good. Can you smell the lemon and the vanilla? I think, mm -hmm. uh, Gary, yeah. I, I don't know. You have to say you do, mm -hmm. but what you do. So I then, do. I, smell the lemon. I am going to put my spices in. Now, of course, you know, uh, Thanksgiving morning, it's always a good morning whenever you're smelling maybe pumpkin pies baking, sweet potatoes, baking, you know, all of that. So we're going to use some nutmeg and we're going to use, and I'm going to use me, I'm going to try, again, I do not want to pour too much. Some of you all people might be a little bit better than me. So we're going to use a half a teaspoon. And I got my little handy one, one measuring in one. So I'm going to turn it to the back to get me a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And see what I've done? Yeah. So, I'm glad you did it over there. I know, <laughs> I know. But you know what? I don't really don't think like nutmeg and cinnamon, they're two of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be too much if you had a little extra. Yeah, but we don't want to mess up. We're doing our recipe, like it right. says. Trying to get and then with the uh, cinnamon, this is what kind of got me. It says a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, but only a fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon. And you would probably think cinnamon you would want more of it than the nutmeg, right? Right. So, I would, <laughs> I, I would too, Gary. <laughs> so, I am going to use my one-fourth, and I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to hold it over this bowl because I do not want it to too much. Okay. And put the lid back on that. So, let's see here. We have got everything that we need in here, Gary. Okay, so we have it all combined in there. Yes. Got and it again, all. this is the Kushaw. 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 Winter pie. squash pie. Winter squash pie. pie. Yes, that's right. That we're making here. So I'm going to go over my, my ingredients so I can make Please sure do. I've got everything. I've used two cups of my Kushaw. I went in. I've used a fourth a cup of butter, mm -hmm. melted. Fourth cup of sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So I've got all of my ingredients in there, don't yep. I, Gary? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. 
Now, like I said, we're going to use this pie shell here. When I do a pie shell, a lot of times I just kind of like to just poke a few holes in it. Except for the liquid to have some Yeah, liquid. just make sure. You know, have you uh, seen pies sometimes you put in the oven and they'll kind of bubble up. This just lets a little of that air out. So I kind of like, you know. Okay. We have our little own quirks that we like to do, don't we? Mm. You've been baking, so you know what to do. Well, you know, not like some people have. So we've got all of our ingredients here. So I'm going to just pour this in here. And you can see some of my butter is still just a little bit in there. Gary, I'm going to turn this around. Yeah. I can turn it around this way. I'm letting the audience be able to see. Yep. And I did use just a regular pie shell, and I'm making a mess over here. Make sure you get all that good stuff in there. Yes. But now you can't lick the bow, Gary. Because <laughs> it eggs. has raw eggs in there. That's right. Exactly right. We got Careful. the raw eggs. So what we're going to do, we're just going to kind of just smooth it out. Uh-huh. And... So, you know, that makes our pie shell pretty full, doesn't it? It does. Now, then after you get your pie, uh, your pie filling in there, you put it in an oven. Now, this is, you have to watch too. And I think most of our pumpkin pies say the same thing. You want to preheat this oven. You want it up to 400 degree temperature. You want to bake it for 15 minutes for, for um, 400. And then you want to turn it down to 350 and cook it for approximately 45 more minutes. Okay. So totally, we're That's cooking it about an hour. But you want that first 15 minutes on 400 degrees and the next 45 minutes on uh, 350. 50. Now, you want to see that we're going to have a magic oven yes. today. Yes. We're, we're going, going to have a magic the finished oven. finished product of our winter squash pie. Yes. That Juanita has already made. Well, I didn't, didn't feel like you wanted to stay here a whole hour, Gary. And, and here it is. Here is our finished product. That's right. Ta-da! And you want to make Let's sure see how good it a, looks. I need to cut a piece out of there, Gary, and see. Yeah. Okay. Try this out. And does it look like, it kind of looks like a pumpkin pie. It does, it? yes. Now, if you notice, I didn't see anything about it, whipped cream on there. I was going to say, I don't see the whipped cream <laughs> on there, but <laughs> it looks oh. like it's missing something. <laughs> you know, I know that people oh, out boy. there in, in TV land, you know, they're we're wanting that whipped cream. But, you know, I'm just, I'm doing the recipe what Plated It Up, U the University of Kentucky has yes. said, and I'm going to. Let them see the inside mm -hmm. of that also. You can see the innards in there too. The innards. He's all the way that's, that's in. That's right. Are you so, going to have a bite? Uh, not right now. <laughs> I just had okay. lunch. Okay. I'll see what Gary has a take on there. Very good. Can you taste that little bit of a lemon? I can. Just, it's not overwhelming. It's just that little mm -hmm. hint. I, I can taste and it. And I like lemon. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. It's mm -hmm. good even without whipped cream, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a simple recipe yeah, that you can make. it's not dry at all. So no, it's mean. not dry. No, mm -hmm. it's not. And again, a lot of times when we're making pumpkin pies, but you know. I can know, taste the lemon, actually. Hmm? I can can you taste lemon. it? Yes, you can. But would you ever thought of using a lemon flavoring in a winter squash it uh, brightens dish? It brightens it up. Huh? It brightens it, it up. It brightens it up. That's a little difference in it. But this is something that, uh, folks, that, that is a little different, but we can make this. And this is one of our plated up recipes from Kentucky Proud here at the University of Kentucky. We're here at the Cooperative Extension Service on Fairgrounds mm -hmm. Road. And if you'd like to have this recipe, please call 270-692-2421. We'd be more than glad to get it to you. And, and of course, you know, Thanksgiving is only two weeks away. That's right. And speaking of that, Okay. You had a couple little tips that you're going to give yes. us for our Thanksgiving safety. Yes. Let's talk about Thanksgiving just a minute, Gary. This is something that we could, that we could uh, make for Thanksgiving. And I know that everybody out there, everybody has their favorite dish for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. But we've got to have that big turkey, right? Right. Got to have that turkey. Gobble, gobble. 
gobble, gobble. One of my favorite things to eat is turkey. But I think I like all my favorite foods. I like them all, you know. What kind of, what part of the turkey is your favorite? I like both kinds, both kinds. Like uh, dark meat? I like them both, yes. Part of my family likes dark, part of it likes the white. So, you know, whatever's left for me, that's what I'll eat, okay? <laughs> but let's talk about that. Now, I know that you all know that turkeys, it's something I'm sure uh, we've been probably been seeing sales on turkey, turkey breast, whatever that you are going to cook for Thanksgiving. Make sure you thaw that turkey out in plenty of time for the big day. Uh, don't be trying to uh, set it out on the counter and trying to thaw it out overnight. That is a no-no. Make sure you're putting your turkey out in the bottom of your refrigerator, probably two to three days prior before the big day that you're gonna cook it. Some people cook their turkeys the day before Thanksgiving. So you wanna allow yourself to make sure that you've got that turkey thawed properly in the, the refrigerator. And you're six and say, well, I know, I know how to do that. But I just wanna remind you that we can get sick from turkeys being thawed out on the countertop. Mm -hmm. because that outer part of the turkey, which is so thick, the outer part can thaw, that inside, that inner part, those innards, you know, you're always talking right. about, that breast is so thick through there that uh, it's not gonna thaw like the outside. And then what happens when it's sitting there, it can form bacteria within two hours that is mm -hmm. forming bacteria and we could possibly get sick. I sure don't want to get sick over some turkey. Right. Do you? No. But, you know, Gary, maybe, maybe you're one of these people that have got a lot going on. You know, you don't have time. Maybe you uh, just realized on Tuesday that everybody's coming to your house on Thursday, right? <laughs> so you're not going to have time to set it much in the bottom of the refrigerator to get it cooked. Another good way to thaw that turkey is to submerge it down in cold water mm -hmm. and what you need to do you submerge it down in the cold water and you do that about every 30 minutes you change the water every 30 minutes in the sink, in the, in the sink or a big container mm -hmm. where that you can get that turkey thawed that's another way that we can thaw a turkey and that way that is the uh, way that the bacteria is not going to form on it mm -hmm. so you know those are some things uh, that we uh, that we can do. Because you know, a lot of times people talk about the holidays. They say, phew, man, I ate too much. I'm about half sick. Maybe the next day, maybe the turkey wasn't thawed properly. Maybe it wasn't cooked to the temperature that, it's, that it should. And it's great to always have a meat thermometer when you're cooking that turkey. When you're gonna do poultry, you wanna make sure that that turkey is cooked to 165 degrees, mm -hmm. the internal temperature. It's always great to have a little uh, meat thermometer. Uh, they're, they're a pretty inexpensive little gadget to purchase, you know. So just make sure that temperature is the right temperature. Uh, when you're going to take the, I'll say when you're going to take the tur turkey's temperature, you want to make sure that you're putting the uh, meat thermometer down in the thickest part of that. Don't just stand it straight up. You want to make sure that you're going down to the thigh and the breast part, and, and you know, you might want to try it a couple of different places mm -hmm. to make sure that it is cooked thoroughly. Because okay. we don't want to be sick. That's right. Now, a lot of people also say the best part or the sandwich is later in the evening. Yes. Are you, there are some tips for that too, to make yes, sure you're not there is. <laughs> yes, having I'm, issues there. I'm, I'm so glad you asked, Gary. You know, we live in an age when we have, you know, Thanksgiving comes along, Everybody has eaten. Maybe they're watching a football game or maybe they're just having fellowship with their families, okay? But then, you know, everybody has left all the food out, <laughs> you know? Let me say this. When you get finished eating, try to get that turkey. That's what I'm thinking of is that turkey or that dressing, the dumplings or whatever that you've got. Try to put them back in the refrigerator uh -huh. as soon as you can. Make sure everybody's got through eating, of course. But you know, because we don't rip it out of their hand. Don't rip it out of their hand. That's right, Gary. <laughs> don't rip it out of their hand. But make sure that you are uh, putting that back where it needs to be properly stored. Because 
you know, there's nothing better than a good old turkey, cold turkey sandwich about 8 or 9 o'clock. You know, there's people that's going to go out Black Friday shopping. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back hungry, right? Yeah. Or need to uh, eat before they go. Uh, yep, yeah, they can eat. Well, they may still be full from their lunch. <laughs> but, but just try to make sure that, because we want to have everybody, I know that we probably overstuff ourselves at Thanksgiving, but if we will just do some of these tips of thawing the turkey, cooking the turkey properly, and then storing it properly, and then bringing it back out. Because I think sometimes leftovers is better than actually the main meal that day. Right. Especially if you're doing the cooking, right? That's right. Yes. That's great. Well, again, there are some great tips for you for having a happy Thanksgiving. And from all of us at Channel 6 TV and Marion okay. Extension, I always like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving as well. And enjoy these pies. If you want to like a copy of the recipe, uh, contact us and we'll get you a yes. copy. Thank you very Thank much. You. Happy Thanksgiving. Right. It's been Gary White, Channel 6, Central Kentucky Television.